Royal Marine Training. The carrot in the stick. Let's go. Stop pulling your fucking respirators off your face so you can breathe easily. If there was gas all over this fucking area, you wouldn't do it then. You certainly wouldn't fucking do it now. You know how many times I've heard that. You guys tell me in the comments. This is the worst effing group of recruits I've ever seen in my entire life. You are the worst effing person. That's pretty typical. Now, are they the worst? Probably not. Um, does it get them motivated and think they're turds? Yeah, it does. Of course. Let's keep going. But what's morale like? Shit, this one is really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yet, within seven months, we'll be following some of them to the front line in Afghanistan. Now, that activity looks like why is a guy grimacing holding his rifle? I would tell you guys that haven't done it, take a milk jug, hold it out there, take a beer, a pint, hold it out there, and just hold it. And you will get tired. And so that exercise, I've done that a lot of times. I remember the first time, clear as day, I was in front of the armory. I think we got our weapons. I don't remember. It was being a boot camp. I did something. I was holding it out like this in front of me. And next thing you know, it's getting heavy. My back's trying to get into it. My arm's tw twitching. It's amazing how you, you don't need a bunch of big weights to do something that'll make your muscles fatigue. If you think you got the fucking That's attitude right. to your own fucking routine, you can think again. Move in, move in. Well, that looks familiar. I appreciate the F-bombs. That reminds me of the U.S. Marine Corps, so we're right on track here. One day we're going to be in this position, and if we don't carry out what we've been taught, you know, we're going to end up dead. Okay, move off. Right, stacks of aggression, lads. I know it's mega chad. You haven't got rounds yet. Contact front. Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, bang, bang! Move! The road to <laughs> Afghanistan starts here. On We may have done that bang, bang, bang. I don't remember. You say contact front, and everybody yell, contact front, and then you get down. Or contact right, you know, so... It's the same kind of thing, except I remember if there was a squad, everybody yell contact front. I don't remember the bang bang part, but I'm sure it was the same way. Pretty common in Devon. Bang bang bang! Zigzag lads, you gotta make yourself a harder target for the enemy. Move! In just their fourth week of training, with 28 still to go, 924 troop haven't even been allowed near a real bullet. Bang! Bang bang bang! Bang 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 bang! <laughs> okay. What we want is nice big zigzags. So that if you're an enemy and you're looking at a bloke, you're actually having to go, oh shit, stay still, will you? Okay, because if you do what you're doing there, both of you, the enemy is just going to be like that, da da da. Yeah, bang, okay, dead. The intake started with 50 recruits, but they've been dropping like flies. You can appreciate the guys that decide it's not for them. Now, you British people let me know, can you just withdraw and go back to your civilian life? I don't think that's a bad thing because you get some guys, they push through and push through and eventually they become head case and they end up getting out anyway. Ten. Ten gone already. It's a classic case of survival of the fittest, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to get to the end, you've got to be a certain type of character and you've got to have just a willpower to just to crack on, mm. regardless of your thrash, cold, wet, hungry. Unfortunately, we lost another one. Three, two, one, go. Someone who wanted to leave within hours of arriving on his very first day was Terry John from St Vincent in the Caribbean. Oh, Terry, you've been battered. But after a dramatic change of heart, he seems to be going strong. He did it 26 seconds quicker than you, and you Mate. still ain't finished. No, I realise everything that I, like, was imagining in my life, like, I'd be running with guns and all that, now it's happening to me, so... I think a lot of these young guys, they get there, and it looks cool on Xbox, and they start having to get screamed at by somebody else, and they don't like it. I get it, you know. If you haven't been screamed at growing up, and all of a sudden you've got three instructors yelling at you, telling you what to do, getting you up at 4.30 in the morning, it's a definite adjustment. hope this guy makes it. Just got to bear with it. Well, I'm not one to use it for bad, really, so I'm, not really, I'm using it to defend myself and, like, this country's interests abroad and all that, so I'm not really worried. I'm not one to kill innocent people. It's all about protecting. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah. So I'll see you around, Chris. You're okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you wonder where he got that, right? I, I would never think that military is there to kill innocent people. I wonder where he got that idea that it came out. You know, that's the media at its finest, I'm guessing. Maybe they asked him a question that led him down that path, but 
you know, I've never would have thought of that when I was in the Marine Corps that, you know, I'm not here to kill innocent people. Of course not. You're there to do the job you're told to do. Unlike Terry, Jordan Slatter, one of the youngest Ooh, like his posters. has never had any doubts. He's dreamed of being a Royal Marine since he was eight years old. Dude, smash myself in the name. Ouch. Hey, if you guys would, follow me on Twitter, check out the Discord, and for my Patreon members, I appreciate you as YouTube demonetizes everything. Being a commando, the standards of the Green Beret are that we will never give up whatever we do. We will go on, we will have an unbelievable determination. A bit of mud, a bit of cold, a bit of water. It's all character building, fellas. It will make you better men if it does not break you. <laughs> you will be, by the end of recruit training, unbreakable. Exercise quick cover involves three days living in the wild to learn all about the art of camouflage. That is the classic statement, right? It'll build character. You know, if something sucks, they'll say it'll build character. Well, I use that. Got out of the military, went on with my life, had children. I would tell them when something sucks, it builds character. Use that one on your kids if you don't have them. <laughs> They have to do everything against the clock, otherwise they get a beasting. The name Marines give to a little beasting. gentle persuasion. Get out, get out. Get fucking down! <laughs> I'll give you this time so you can make the best use of it and start learning. But instead, you lot like doing press-ups. I'm Ben. Stretch. Right, in the field, when we tell you to do something, you do it like fucking grease weasel shit. You go so fast. <laughs> You can see your shadow behind you. Five in your own time. Go on. Yeah, and this is standard. Either side of the Atlantic, right? You know, the instructor's riding you, giving you shit for being too slow. And sometimes they say 20, 19, 18. And next thing you know, it's one. So you don't have 20 seconds. You know, they're just going to get you because they keep you thinking all the time, right? All right, lads, now start looking at your partner. Hey. Hasn't broke out the outline of his helmet. Yeah, big panda eyes. <laughs> yeah, everyone see that. When you put sticks in, things like that, make sure that the uh, the roots or the ends of the sticks are facing downwards, not facing upwards, all right? Because that looks unnatural, doesn't it? You guys want part two? Let me know in the comments. And then the couple was like, it may or may not save your life. I'm like, OK, so I might die if I don't do it right. So just don't mock up and you won't die. <laughs> Did you tie the other one, mate? Tie the other one. Oh, for fuck, you said tie my boot. Please, mate. Ah, ah, they have prickles all over my socks, mate. Ah. You know, they say that to you. This is going to protect your life. And the time, you're pretty serious about it. And people watch this that aren't in the military, and they go, well, come on, you know, come on now. Well, you never know, right? So the job could entail you getting shot or shooting. So there is an opportunity. You're not an accountant. So it's a good thing to know. Now, do most people die in the military get hurt? No, of course not. But this stuff's important, probably as much for the guy next to you as you. Because you can't be a total F up in this kind of work. You've got explosive, explosives, live rounds, you know, stuff that can hurt somebody, including other people. Take your time, mate. 5 a.m. the following morning. I love getting in the field when it's freezing cold and putting cold water on my testicles. As a punishment for their slackness the previous day, 924 Troop have an extra kit inspection. And they're told if anyone fails, they will all have to pay the price. I can tell you right now somebody's going to fail. Does somebody fail in real terms? Probably not. He's going to say you failed. These guys can find something. You're out there, you're new, kit inspection, you know, something's dirty. Something's not polished, right? You know, they're going to find something. Until you get into a habit of doing this over and over, you're not going to be good at it. And your gas parts, now check, they're free from carbon and not rusty. will cause you stoppages. A stoppage means if an enemy is shooting at you, you cannot shoot back at him. He'll get the better of you and he'll kill you. Well, sure, that is taking the yeah. fucking piss, isn't it? Cool. <laughs> That's not even benefit of the doubt material. You've got camera cream on your face, your boots are honking, your turnout's filthy, and your jackets are done. They used to say to guys that usually was out of boot camp or training, but let's say there's an inspection downstream, somebody gained weight. They'd say it looks like 50 pounds of shit in a 25-pound bag. 
that's pretty common, you know. The inspection side of this thing, checking it, it's dirty. They're going to find it. And some guys just don't get it. When you've been through it, you know exactly what they're going to look at. If you stick your pinky in one of those orifices and it's dirty, it's not clean enough. So when it was that dirty, that guy didn't even clean it or he's just a brand new guy. Nothing. It's one of the worst fucking turnouts I've ever seen, yeah? If you're a complete bag shit, then <laughs> fucking leave, yeah? Simple as that. Absolutely terrible. I don't understand how quickly that they're going to be at a unit and friends of mine are going to be looking at them and knowing that I've passed them out. And that's that's my biggest loyalty. I don't care about all the officers and all that. The recruits are punished for a poor kit inspection that itself was a punishment for poor camouflage. For some reason, they're not working well. And, and those instructors can PT you to death. You wonder what kind of shape they must be in. That guy looked amazing. You have your instructors, in our case, drill instructors, they can run around circles. They're running, if you're running five miles, they're running 10 because they're running around you, screaming, yelling. They lose so much weight, and that's why they have to be that way. You don't see any fat drill instructors. You don't see any fat instructors doing this because they have to be to keep up with you because you'll have some studs in these kind of trainings. Individually or as a team. I don't know what it is. It's just, whether it's just me or the troop, there's no motivation. So there's no motivation. And it's just, we're the ones going straight out to Afghanistan. Mess. I mean, if we're not, listen, if we're not learning all this now, then we'll be fucked, won't we? Oh, that duck walking. That, <laughs> got to try that at home if you never have. And I'm not talking five feet. And they, you have to stay below a certain height. You know, I don't remember exactly how they measured it. They whack you in the head. But that'll wear you out. I think that's what we called it. Sometimes with packs on, sometimes with rifles behind your head. You know, it's good training. It'll definitely build you up. But the problem is they've probably been running, doing everything else. Now they're doing this, and their legs are just getting swollen. I crawl. Nothing you seem to do is right. <laughs> we're still not. We're still not working as a team or a troop, even in our sections, though. You know why I laugh about it? Because I can remember that. When you're just screwed up and they're making the duck walk, bends and thrusts, side straddle hops, roll over, high crawl, low crawl, you know, low crawl, you're dragging your face on the ground. The thing is, you're not just doing one. You're doing up, down, up, down, you're moving. And you're already tired, right? You're, you know, you already know what's coming. It's this time, midday, maybe mid-morning, and all, all day ahead of them. It's just never going to end. And thank God for the youth, right? That's why, yeah. <laughs> uh, something's got to happen. Something's got to click. Take cover! Boy, tell you to take cover. You do it as quick as you can. Later on in your career, it might mean because your life depends on it. If it's not your life, it may be one of your oppos. Look round now, everyone stood next to you. It might be one of them. <laughs> Do you pray for everyone? Yeah, I pray for everybody. I pray for all those calls. I've been in that kind of muck before. That didn't look terrible. When you're in that kind of muck sometimes, you get your boots, kind of sucks you in and get it out. It's like a suction. So it's hard to get the boot out. If you don't have your stuff on tight, you will lose a boot. It'll wear you out. It's not like quicksand. It's just like owl snot mud. If you guys ever been that, put that in the comments. And in this training in particular, I'm sure that's a real pain in the ass. That be mean to us sometimes. <laughs> Situation: You're in the middle of Afghanistan. There are approximately four to five Taliban fighters to your front. <laughs> Move. I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to go and probably kill people and all that. I was really considering it, mate. I was really on. Hey, let me front. Hey, let me front. Take down. Take cover. Accurate rounds. Two accurate rounds. Okay, enemy dead. Okay, good effort. Oh. Love, right, love, right. You do have some guys that join up, whether it be the U.S. Marine Corps, or the Royal Marine Commandos, and they kind of not sure if they could kill somebody. And no one's ever sure, but you think if you didn't want to get into potentially that field, right? You go into the Air Force, the Navy, or something different, but a lot of guys do that, and I always scratched my head. Now, most guys aren't doing anything. You know, they may go, may get deployed, may not. It is a head scratch. You guys ever seen that? Put it in the comments. Look, Terry 
just started giving us a lecture on uh, the uh, downsides of war earlier. He's getting me quite worried. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die. Well, you can't think of it in that way if you have to do it, but then you have to also think of it because it is, there's a possibility of it. Go to war! Kill him! Kill him! Yeah, he had a good point. Why else do you join the Marines? Well, everybody thinks they're a tough guy, and you never know till you get in. You may go, wow, there's a lot of tougher guys. And do you have the makeup for it? So this guy's, you know, they're talking. It makes sense what they're saying. Why would you join the Marines? If you don't want to have the potential to get into some scrum, want to do a job, job, more professional. These are just about killing. <laughs> this morning, spirits are surprisingly high. The reason? Today is the start of a three-week summer break, and everyone's going home. Oh wow! Lieutenant Rodder's only concern is how many will come back. Now, help me understand this for a second, for my British viewers. You get a break in between for three weeks. You could not come back, right? Is that the way it works? That's definitely a difference. If you don't go back to boot camp, there's no break like that. There's no weekends off. But if you don't go back, it'd be considered like AWOL, right? Quick, march. Left, right. After their summer break at home, the recruits of 924 Troop return to the commando training camp at Limpston. Honestly. You want to leave? Yeah. Because he's a fasty old. No, he's mad. I've written a letter to say that. I've already found it. Who have you written to? I've written it to, I just adjusted to like, so. Dear sir, this is PO 64955, recruit John. I don't want to continue with my training because I am not mentally able to handle this type of life here. I'm deeply sorry. Yours respectfully, recruit John. You know, guys feel that way at times, I'm sure. But this is the thing that if he did it, and I don't know if he does or not, he'd regret it when he's 40. He'd go, God, I should have done it. Because the time here, four months, seems like an eternity. When he's 40, four months will seem like a day. So hopefully he doesn't quit. Let's see. Oh, my <coughs> Our boys. That's, you know what I mean? This was an amazing show of true British grit and heroic against all the odds. Our Marines showed why they are the best in the world. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about the training. Our <laughs> Marines showed why they are the best in the world. Yes. We can we can make the physical side of it work and then turn the guys who are physically fit and robust and determined. But it's the bit in here that is the, the mental. Which is literally the, the Honestly my head is on fire, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I would not lie to you, my head is on well, he was fine, then he went home for three weeks. First of all, that's a mistake, I think, Let him go home for three weeks. Shorten the training by three weeks and just get done with it. You know, my opinion, since no one asked, let me tell you, no weekends off, no three weeks off, cut the training cycle down by that period. It's probably going to be a month and a half because you're just dragging it out. You know, if you just hammer through, you're done. I don't think you do it this way. For this type of reason, this kid's homesick, and I understand. It's splitting open. I, I'm, I'm thinking, honestly, what if I get my green berry? Yes. Go into action, get injured severely, come back out. What am I to do with myself? And I haven't even done it. Wait, wait. The and chances you being knocked down and injured or killed in Exmouth High Street are much, much more than they are of you being injured or killed in the battlefield. That's just, that's just maths. You know, you can't live your life thinking whatever all the time. Yeah, and he's right. The, the likelihood of this young man dying in battle, he's more likely to die from a DUI hit and run than he is from in battle. Unfo that's the unfortunate truth. There's a lot of other things that are going to kill you. You just hear about the troops because it's magnified in the media. Five exposures. Make it 12 target. It's the end of week eight of training. Just 24 to go now before deployment to Afghanistan. And for the moment, Terry has battled through his doubts and fears and not handed his letter in to serve. Good. Along with everybody else, he's now graduated to live firing on the ranges at a virtual enemy. Everyone must now become proficient at firing in the prone, kneeling and standing positions up to 300 meters. Do you ever worry about 
I'd say the problem with that type of training right there is if you don't know where you're hitting, in other words, you may shoot 10 rounds. Without knowing you're hitting, you can't make adjustments, especially if there's wind involved, which I'm sure there is in this coast. You know, humidity changes. Your weapon got bumped. So the U.S. Marine Corps does a good job of that. I'm not sure how they do it when they're qualifying. Maybe it's a little different. But I would say for you guys watching, you definitely want to make sure you know where your groups are at. Do you need to adjust your weapon? Do I need to look differently to the sights? Do I got my peep sight up, my night sight, peep sight? Uh, they're using optics. But if you have iron sights, it's important stuff. All right. Part of the job. Don't really think about it. It's all of you or them, isn't it? And uh, they're pretty hell-bent on taking us out from what you hear, so nah, it's just part of the job. Don't think of it as, oh, killing someone. It's what we joined up to do. Joined up to be a Roman commando, joined up to go to war, joined up... All right, so the target gets knocked down when you hit it. I'm going to hit the side and maybe get knocked down. Maybe, you guys let me know, put in the comments, do they really sight their weapon in? You know, somebody's marking the target, and then go back and go, okay, my groups are here to the left and down. Let me adjust my sights to the up and to the right. Let me know. To be part of the best fighting force in the world, you know? Turning the recruits of 924 Troop into fighting Marines is not proving that easy for the training team. So, from now on, they've decided that they're going to give the recruits a choice. We've got <laughs> using the carrot. carrot and stick method with the recruits. Either donkey, come here, I'll give you a carrot, and if you don't come here, I'll beat you to death with a fucking stick. Like it. So we've made the recruits make this, and they have to carry it around with them wherever they go. And at any point, we can ask them whether they'd like us to be nice to them, or whether they'd just like us to thrash them. Oh, they boy. do prefer <laughs> the stick. They do prefer being thrashed. I can appreciate these instructors, you know, they want to get them right. You know, they truly do. They don't want to be a-holes. And sometimes you got to be an a-hole and you tell somebody 30 times, clean your weapon. It's dirty the 31st time. It pisses you off because like he said before in the video, they're going to Afghanistan. Take aside the pride if you trained them. You don't want them to be next to your good buddy and they're in his platoon. They don't do their job properly. Hopefully nothing comes of it, but that's the inevitability of this training. Any of them got their CBA on? No, no, no. no. Right, McCann's the only one who's fucking hard. Suddenly, the instructors find out that only one man is wearing the type of combat body armor that must be worn on the ranges. Hell is about to be unleashed. <laughs> if you think you've got the fucking attitude to sit back here and do your own fucking routine, you can think again on bent and straight. You go in here, fellas, to the range all last week and this fucking week. You know the routine, you know what's required on the fucking range. It won't stop a round on its own, but fragmentation, should there be some accident or a ricochet, you know, it will stop. But not only that, if you get shot, it keeps your insides in. You know? Probably have a flak jacket on, that's what we had when I was in. They're heavy, you get hot in them. No one wants to have the thing on if you don't have to, but we never wore them at the range. Maybe it's a new protocol in the U.S. Marine Corps, too, but the bottom line is this instructor has been told, wear your flak jacket at the range, tells the recruits, recruits don't do it. Time to pay, right? If you don't want to do it, you just pay. So you only have a small, you should have a small round in the front of you and a small round in the back of you, apparently, so they say. Um, so <laughs> it's a safety bit of kit, it's there for a reason. If it wasn't there for a reason, then we wouldn't issue it, as simple as that. When I say fucking go, you move at the fucking speed of your legs, we'll fucking carry you into one straight line, facing Corporal Glanfield, who is at your fucking rear. Do you understand? Yes, sir! Move! Get up there! The training team hope that this beasting will persuade the recruits never to forget their CB. What really sucks about gas mask running, and I was in mop gear and gas masks during the first golf war. We did a lot of training with it, and you get sweaty in there, and you can't see, and you can't breathe. You're breathing into the thing. It's not pushing air as fast as you're pushing it out. You know, it's constricting. Some people get claustrophobic. You just get hot. It's a pain in the ass, basically. You know, it's like putting a pillowcase over your head and running around, but worse. Okay. Stop fucking pulling your fucking respirators <laughs> off your face so you can <laughs> breathe easily. 
Do you think if there was gas all over this fucking area, you would be pulling your mask off your face? You wouldn't do it then. You certainly wouldn't fucking do it now. Go five, number two, five. Should have known we fought in the last round. Could have done it, I don't know. Makes for a long day when you start getting smoked first thing in the morning. And it happens. They're going to smoke you sometimes for the hell of it. Now, these guys made a major flaw. Here's what you bring to the range every time. And they did it the week before. I don't know if they just all forgot if one guy brought it or seems kind of weird. I can see a couple of guys forgetting or being running behind and trying to sneak by. What do you guys think? Put that in the comments. How did one guy get it and others didn't? Typically, you're going to have somebody that sort of takes over, right? A leader in the platoon. you got to have a guide, squad leaders, right? They're going to make sure their squad squared away in training. All expectations. Everyone ended up passing their range tests. It's the end of week nine of training, and the recruits face yet another rigorous assessment. Gym pass out. Only those who reach the required standard in all the gym tests will be allowed to stay with 924 Troop. Anyone who fails will be transferred to a more junior troop. Terry John passes all the tests, but eight other recruits fail. Jordan Slatter passes everything except the ropes, so must now leave 924 Troop and all his friends. Wow, so he got rolled back for not passing the ropes. Some people have a, do have a hard time with ropes. You gotta have good upper body strength. There is a technique. I'm not sure if they can use their legs or not. He wasn't, but getting rolled back, I never was, but it sucked for guys. So in this case, at the training six, eight months, now you get rolled back to another platoon. He could be there nine, 10 months, right? Depending on how close the classes are together. Right then, Slatter. Uh, you failed the rope climb yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. You're going to go back two weeks. Right, you've let me down, you've let yourself down. Don't lose sight of your goal. And your goal is a Green Beret at the end of the day, isn't it? It wasn't to pass out with 924 Troop. When I think of a true reason why we're here, to become Royal Marines, and no one said this is going to be easy and all that, and everything is hard. Yeah. Just do it and get it done with it. Just, as they say, crack on. You know, the PT side of it, when you get in, you know, a couple months at a minimum, you're in such good shape, they can PT you all day. When they start taking away time, you know, free time at night, clean your boots and you start having to push or more guard duty, or more shitty duties, that's what sucks. All these guys are going to be good shape at this point. It comes easy, you just got to do it sometime. Oh. You know, you can jump that far and beat Smith. best way to do this is fast. Oh, look at that. Oh! At the end of every like exercise we do, at the end of it, I guarantee you, you get stronger physically and mentally. Every now I don't know how much O course work these guys do, obstacle course work. That kind of thing he was doing there is stuff that helps on the obstacle course. You know, you're climbing ropes, you're jumping over things, you're climbing up towers, things of that sort. Put it in the comments and tell me what kind of obstacle course work they do. I haven't seen any so far. Fortress. Now, who have we lost? Porter, Smith, Jay. But I'm actually really delaying rubbing out Slatter because he was a good lad. Oh, I don't know. At the minute, man. It was a one off with him, and I don't think any of us saw it coming. So we've lost half originals already, and it's only week nine. So we've got another ooh, 23 weeks to go. Never mind. I would think. From week 10 on, you're not going to have as many drops as they're injured. Because at this point, the physical part's there. They're not going to quit. You know, injuries may set them back. Because that is a long training period. I think coming back after that three-week break, you know, three weeks off for somebody who's staying in tip-top shape is a long time. I'm sure they weren't PT, and I'm sure they're drinking pints with their buddies and eating. So I'm going to go again against the three weeks, take that out of the training cycle. That's my vote since no one asked. Jordan Slatter is eventually diagnosed with a back injury oh and boy. medically discharged. See, there His we go. The dream of being a Royal Marine Commando is over. If you guys want more of this series, put part two in the comments. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. For my Patreon members, I appreciate you, and thanks for watching.